Okay, we've got a quick video here um, comparing Kool-Aid drinking and photography. I know that seems like a stretch, but I think I can make this work. Um, we're going to be talking in this short video about three different ways to measure your photos. Um, we're going to be looking at measuring file dimensions, and then determining file size and file resolution. And the whole time, we're going to be talking about, of course, drinking a tall glass of Kool-Aid. Okay, speaking of a tall glass of Kool-Aid, here we have um, some Kool-Aid here. Um, we need ways to measure it. Um, we're going to talk about three quick ways. Uh, the first way we can measure this glass is to measure the height and the width of the glass. Uh, and that will determine if it's a tall glass, a short glass, a fat glass, a skinny glass. That's just one way that we can measure um, the amount of Kool-Aid that we have. Alright, so the second way to measure is with the amount. You can see the difference between these two glasses of Kool-Aid. One is full and one has been um, drinking out of and the levels down so whether you say this glass is half empty or we could actually also say this glass doesn't weigh as much as the other one because there's not as much Kool-Aid and then the third way we can measure and this probably you haven't thought about is the density of the Kool-Aid I know you've had um, some Kool-Aid in the past that was super sweet and then some that was kind of watered down, you know, if you leave it with ice in it and it kind of melts in the summer, you can say, oh, that's super sweet Kool-Aid, or yuck, that's all watered down, I don't like it anymore. And that's by measuring density. So, the same thing works for photographs. Um, here's a picture, and we can measure the width and the height. We can measure that in inches, we can measure that in pixels, and that gives us the dimensions for a photograph. Uh, the second way to measure that is to to talk about the file size or how many kilobytes or how many megabytes the photo is in this case the images are the, exactly the same size but one of the images the one on the left is only a hundred K which isn't very big at all um, the one on the right is two megabytes and so that's going to be a lot bigger file not bigger as in width and height but bigger in file size and the third way we can look at this is measuring density. Um, the photograph on the left is 72 dots per inch and the photograph on the right is 300 dots per inch. Again, they're the same size but the density is different. The photo on the left you can see is washed out because it doesn't carry as much data as the one on the right. 300 dpi has a lot more details, a lot more contrast because the resolution is higher. Okay? Let's talk about resolution a little bit more. Um, let's take a look at this photograph. It's a 4x6 print, 6 inches wide, 4 inches high. And if we have a photograph that's 72 dpi, or dots per inch, sometimes you'll even see ppi, which is pixels per inch. What that means is that they are dividing up each inch, each square inch, into pixels. So in this particular example, every inch holds 72 pixels in length and 72 pixels in height. So what that calculates to is if you have a 4 by 6 print that's 6 by 4 inches, well 4 inches times 72 dots per inch equals 288. And then 6 inches wide times 72 dots per inch equals 432. So this image at 72 dpi is only 432 by 228. You got that? Let's look at it again. Here's the same image, 4 inches by 6 inches, but this time the image is saved at 300 dpi, or 300 resolution. The difference is, every inch in the photograph, in this case, accounts for 300 pixels instead of 72. So when you do the math, if you take 4 inches times 300 dots per inch, that's 1200 pixels. And if you take 6 inches times 300 dpi, that's 1800 pixels. So again, whether you print at 72 dpi or 300 dpi determines the amount of details in the photograph. With me so far? Alright, so let's take a look. Okay, so how big should our images be? Well, if you're gonna print, here's the simple rule. Print the biggest file you possibly can and we'll let the printer figure all that out. You can have a print maybe 4,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels and print it as small as a 4x6 photo. And it's okay. Those details just get all crammed into that print. And once it's converted to paper, no one really cares how big that file was. So if that photo is going on the screen, it does make a difference. 
All right, so let's take a look at some other measurements here. Most laptops are 1,024 pixels by 768. A uh, widescreen laptop might be 1,280 pixels by 800, and some of the newer laptops with super high resolution screens might go as big as 1,920 by 1,200 pixels. So if I'm going to put a picture um, up on the web for other people to see on their screens, there's not a reason to make that picture show up bigger than, say, 1,920 pixels, because if we do, they're going to have to scroll left and right to see it all. And if they're on a, an older laptop that's only showing maybe 1024 by 768, it's going to be way too big. So my general rule of thumb is when I'm sending a picture out to the internet or through email, I only make it as big as I have to. If I want somebody to see it full screen on their laptop, then I make it 1024 by 768. Or if I'm sending an email directly to somebody that I know that has a really big screen, super high res, then I might bump it up to, um, say, 1900 pixels or maybe even 2000 um, but very rarely do I do that I just look and make sure that I'm sending the right file size for the right purpose I hope this clears things up good luck and let me know if you need any help